والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. so let's continue then with سورة الأنكبوت. so so far we've looked at the reality of life that it's inevitable to be tested. The fact that those people who are becoming the means of that test, the enemies of Allah and His Rasul, they won't be able to just flee from that. They will be accounted for that. And that will be, we'll elaborate more on that in the last ayat of this section. And the fact that Allah is with you, Allah is watching you, Allah is helping you. So strive for His cause. And then Allah Ta'ala is promising that not only will he get rid of our sins, he will give us the best of rewards. So there is the promise there of reward. Let me just, uh, inshallah. Okay. So now we're moving on to another type of trial. Now there was an interesting, interesting question or comment made in break. Brother was saying that what if apparently we don't have a trial or test? 9 to 5, easy, kushti, happy, rosy, yeah, and the rest of it. But there's no trial. So the trial there is wal asr. Time is running out. You're doing nothing for it. That's the test. That's actually more dangerous than the test that is in your face. Because that keeps you alert, awake. But if you're on cruise control, there's no test, apparently. That's when you really need to think, I need to be doing something with my time. So, Allahu Alam. So the other trial or test that's been mentioned here is that which is a very personal trial for a person regarding his relationship with his relatives, especially his parents. And this was common because the, the types of people who accepted Islam initially in Makkah were those who were downtrodden, like the slaves, etc., and the youth, the young people, who were open to ideas. They were not set in their ways. And this relates more to those youth who had taken up this deen, but their parents had not. And hence their parents, as all parents would, and they still do, of other faith, they would become a barrier or an obstacle for that person to remain on that deen. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا And we have enjoined upon man goodness to his parents. وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ لِتُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا But if they strive to make you associate with me, meaning Allah, that of which you have no knowledge, do not obey them. So this is mentioning... I think we need to maybe fix this thing now, yeah? Because this is becoming a problem. Okay. So the uh, <coughs> example given here is that of Saad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. Saad. Ibn Abi Waqqas Sa'ad Ibn Abi Waqqas So we need to know the name What was the first name I mentioned today that we need to know? Khabbab Ibn Art Good So this is the second noun Sahabi that we need to love for the sake of Allah Sa'ad Ibn Abi Waqqas His mother Hamna bin Abi Sufyan so she's the daughter of Abu Sufyan. Yeah. He became Muslim. When his mother found out, she, as a mother, became very emotional. And she said, I swear not to drink or eat until you return to the deen. Meaning, the deen of the Quraysh. 
and this became difficult. He would try to force feed her because he didn't want his mother to die, of course, or to suffer. And people were verbally now torturing him. Look at you, because of, your mom, because of you, your mom is going to die. Because of you, your mom is going through hardship. Look at what your mom did for you. Look at what you're doing for you. You see all these things? Difficult, yeah? But then he said something that put this to rest. He said, oh my mother, even if you were given a hundred lives, I read somewhere a thousand, but I'm not sure about a hundred. I've definitely read in Tirmidhi, the Hadith in Tirmidhi. And you were given a hundred lives and you died a hundred times because of your, uh, what do you call it, strike, hunger strike. Yeah? I will still not leave this deed. Meaning he made it very clear to his mother that that's not happening, no matter what happens. Only then did she give up. In fact, it was good because then she gave up that hunger strike. So it was good for her. Yeah? So this is Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. And this is the advice being given to those believers at that time and until the Day of Judgment that Allah he is giving you the wasiyah, the uh, exaltation, have good treatment with your parents, even if they are non-Muslim, but do not obey them when they ask you to associate partners with me. So good treatment you have to keep continuing to do, but you do not follow them in their belief if that goes against Allah. Now the principle that we learn from that is as follows, لا تعطوا لمخلوق في مأسية الخالق لا تعطوا لمخلوق في مأسية الخالق what that means is that there is no obedience of the creation. There is no obedience of the creation. So there is no obedience of the creation. So you cannot obey the, a created being if that leads to the disobedience of the creator. So there is no obedience of the creation which leads to the disobedience of the Creator. لا تعا لمخلوق في معصية الخالق So you cannot follow anybody, anybody, if that person is telling you to disobey, if that entails or that leads to you disobeying Allah. Within the limits, you can obey anybody, in ma'roof, in right things, in good. So you obey your teacher, you obey your parents, you obey, I was going to say wife, or your husband. Yani, <laughs> in ma'roof, yeah? Okay? But you do not ever obey them if this will lead to disobeying Allah. Why? It tells us in the next part. Ilayya marji'ukum. You all have to come back to us. Meaning you have to die and come back to us, Allah Ta'ala is saying. فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ Again, the same verb construct. فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ Not only will we tell you, we are definitely going to tell you. Be sure about, you see this is about Akhirah. Be sure about Akhirah. بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Of those things that you used to do. So we are going to take account and we will completely tell you, itemized. Yeah, you get itemized bill of every single thing that you did. As a person. So this uh, subject we have already covered. Mr. Adasi mentioned this in Surah Luqman. Yeah? A bit of revision. Just to start you off with your revision, inshallah. I'm not going to translate that. But I'm expecting you to know that. Yeah. Same subject matter has been mentioned there. Have good company with your parents. Don't follow them if they ask you to do shirk. Because you have to come back to us. We will take account and tell you what you did. There is a beautiful uh, ayah in Surah Maryam that really makes it clear. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْضًا Anybody know the meaning? كلهم وكلهم يا سيستا. very good جزاك الله خير ما شاء الله 
Asant. You are learning Arabic? Yeah. MashaAllah. May Allah make you scholar of Arabic, inshallah, for this ummah. Ameen. So they will all come on the day of judgment to Allah fardan. Alone. Everybody will go to Allah alone. Doesn't matter what clan you are with, what nationality you think you are with. Because we think we are in nationality, isn't it? Not really. Man-made nationality, yeah? Everybody will come on his or her own. Not with the group, the clan, except no. Alone. So hence you have to look out for your own benefit and your own harm as well. Again, subhanAllah, look at this promise that Allah is making. وَالَّذِينَ amalu وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Again, Allah Ta'ala is emphasizing belief and good deeds, yeah? Because belief without good deeds is a problem. Shaitan believed in Allah, yes? He believed in the Malaika because he used to be with them. He believed in the Day of Judgment. He has the main pillars, he believes in them. But he didn't do any righteous good deed which is to obey Allah. He has a problem because of that. So when we believe, we have to act upon that belief. Yeah? Because that's testimony that we actually believe. So, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ We definitely will enter them, make them enter in those people who are the salih, the righteous people. Now what does that mean? The obvious thing that that means is that in the hereafter, the people who do good deeds after having Iman, they will be with those people who are righteous in that they have also done good. So you'll be with good people because you did good. Yeah? The other thing that we can understand from this is as looking at the context of this ayah, yeah, you are accepting Islam, for example, Saad ibn Abi Waqas, and you are unfortunately being cut off from your family, yeah? So now there's a void, you have no family. But who are you joining? The Salih people. You are now accompanying Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, and before that Uthman, and Bilal, etc, 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 yeah? So we will enter you into the Salihin, even in this life, you will be with those people. So think what you are losing is heartbreaking, but what you are gaining, look at that, what you are gaining from that. Hmm? And in the hereafter. So look how Allah Ta'ala is catering for us. Because there are people in this world, in fact in this room, who have become Muslim. Yeah? At a certain age, or after a certain age, Allah has given them hidayah. Now, they are not that close to their parents who are not Muslim. Because their parents obviously would like them to become what they were initially, yeah? But they have, although they have lost that, they have gained the company of the believers, here and in the hereafter. So Allah Ta'ala, He's putting that into perspective. Look at what it is really like. Look at the richer picture. One other Sahabi I want to mention is Mus'ab ibn Umair. Mus'ab ibn Umair. Anybody know about Musab? Anything? Yes, Bismillah. Very well of family. Yeah, brother, I'm narrating at the brother saying, yeah, that about Musab ibn Umair, wealthy family, well perfumed when he used to go out. And in fact, when he used to go out, you would know that Musab has passed because the perfume was so strong. And when Musab ibn Umair, he accepted Islam, he went to his mother, yeah? And she rejected him. I will add a bit, yeah, to that. Inshallah, Jazakallah khair. That, okay, you have rejected your forefather's religion, yeah? But you have to leave the house. 
So he is ready to leave the house. Because you see, when you say you leave the house, then you think, oh, where am I going to go? Yeah? I have to think twice now, where am I going to go? So that is a tactic that sort yourself out. But he's all, alhamdulillah, already sorted out. He says, I will leave. Then now in frustration, what is being said to him? That even the clothes, because you know his clothes, they were not ordinary clothes like I wear. Not like the admiral, etc. Mashallah. Oh, sorry, we didn't congratulate Nahid. You see, for two QFCs, it took two QFCs, alhamdulillah. Make dua <laughs> constant, constantly, consistently. And mashallah, brother Nahid, may Allah bless him, he's being married, inshallah, very soon, in August. I was so happy when I heard the news. I, wallahi, I was so happy for him. And my sister, she was so happy as well for him. Allahu Akbar. So, khair. <laughs> oh, Zakallah khair. You see, young minds, they think, mashallah, these strategies. I didn't think that. If you are not married, join third QFC. Allah is Zakallah khair. So Musab ibn Umar, then he says, she says, yes, even these clothes, because his clothes used to come from Syria, Sham, special, yeah, not ordinary clothes. She says, you have to even leave these clothes because these are your, these are the same as your, yani what you're leaving behind. You're leaving your forefathers, this is part of that package, leave it. He had to leave naked, subhanAllah. This is Musab ibn Umar. Who knows about his last few sister going to tell us, please? Yes. Is it that when he passed away in Bakr al Badr and when he died, there wasn't any cloth to, that would cover his head so then it would be even when he was covered? So he was only covered two times. That's right. This is Musab ibn Umar. When he was Shaheed in Uhud. The cloth that he had was not enough to cover his whole body. So when they covered his head, the feet were uncovered. And when they covered his feet, the head was uncovered. And the Prophet ﷺ, he saw this and he was sad. This, this is that Mus'ab, yeah, who was brought up in luxury. Hmm? Luxury, not any luxury. And now there's not enough for him even to be buried. So the Prophet ﷺ said, cover his head. And put grass, lemon grass. I read in the translation. I don't know if if that's what it means, but in the translation, grass. When I when I listened to this talk uh, in Urdu, it was not lemon grass. It was something else. But khair anyway, grass to cover the feet. Hmm? And this was the burial cloth of Musab ibn Umair. But he's successful. He's successful because he died for Allah and his Rasul. Okay, let's move on inshallah. There are some double perspective that you can't see because this thing keeps messing up. Respect and honor your parents, but do not confuse this with disobedience of Allah. Yeah? Your parents, if they tell you to do something that is not according to Allah, then nicely try to correct the situation. Nicely, yes, Bismillah. If uh, this disobedience is to be to shirk or any any ma'roof, you see, <coughs> anything that Allah has commanded us to do, and they say no, then priority is with Allah. So, for example, you want to pray, they say no, you can't pray. For example, more realistic example, you can't sit without the women being there. Because they are your auntie and she's like your sister, like your sister, etc. So you can't obey them. But nicely, say, no, I can't, sorry, I can't, because this is not, Allah doesn't want me to do this. If I'm in this mixed gathering, then Allah would not be happy with me. And if I die in this mixed gathering, then Allah won't be happy with me. And I don't want you to sit here either, better to, yeah, nicely. But we can't, especially the... With, with shadi comes many tests, yeah? With wedding comes many tests. May Allah Ta'ala make Nahid steadfast, inshallah. We are with you, inshallah. Eh? Don't worry. We are with you, inshallah, in this. Because many, you know, we are customs, unfortunately. Many of them, without realizing, they are 
un-Islamic customs. Yeah? We break many rules without realizing. May Allah guide us. Inshallah. Khair. Okay, let's move on then. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ فَإِذَا أُوذِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعْلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعْذَابِ اللَّهِ And then from amongst the people there are some there are some who say we believe in Allah but when they are tested yeah, or given trial or they are actually persecuted yeah, Isa is to be persecuted in the cause of Allah they consider this test that has come through people as if it is the adab of Allah meaning this is how greatly they consider it they make a, such a big deal out of it this is referring really to the people who didn't have real belief because the last part of the, uh, this section this 11th ayah talking about munafiqin and this happened more in Medina more in Medina <coughs> who was the Leader of the hypocrites in Medina? Yes, sister? Good. Abdullah ibn Ubay. The, he was the Ra'is al Munafiqin. The leader of the hypocrites. And before the Prophet came to Medina, he was about to become the leader. About to. So for him, this was a big headache for him. So he pretended to be Muslim. In fact, he would even stand when the Prophet would come for Juma or for Khutbah. He would say, listen to the Prophet, listen to the Prophet, you know, to be even extra. <coughs> and there were many other people like that. And when you watch the video or the cartoon, you'll realize now who I'm talking about. So from amongst the people, they say they believe, but when the t testing time comes, like in Uhud, what did he do with this? With, and with how many people? What did he do? 300, he did what? Nashad Bhai? He ran away. He went back. Yeah. Deserted the army. So they make this fitna of people, meaning in the life, as if it is the adab of Allah. Now how can we compare that? Adab of Allah is shadeed. Adab of Allah is unimaginable. Punishment of Allah. Jahannam. Etc. This is too much. So Allah Ta'ala is also telling us here, that compared to the adab of Allah, the punishment or the trial that you get here is very, very small compared to that. So don't think this is too much. Compared to that, this is nothing. But the other side of these people, وَلَا إِنْ جَاءَ نَصْرٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكْ But if the nasr, the help from your Lord comes, meaning that the believers are victorious, لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّا كُنَّا مَعَكُمْ They will definitely say, and Surah Munafiqun really is amazing in this regard if you read the surah surah munafiqun for more detail here they will definitely say we were with you definitely we were with you when we with you in medina but what happened in the book what happened in Ahd? you ran they say we are with you when it's time to share the booty when it's time to be victorious Allah Ta'ala is now asking them a searching question. Is Allah not aware of what is in the breasts of the Alameen? Meaning that, do you think you'll be able to hide this? This hypocrisy. You say you believe, but your actions are against that. Because inside there's no real belief. Do you think you can hide this from Allah? Allah Ta'ala is still giving them a chance. Isn't it? He knows you, he knows what is in your hearts, and he knows what you will say. And in Surah Tawbah also, amazing about Surah, in Surah Tawbah, in fact one of the names of Surah Tawbah is that which uncovers the Munafiqeen. May Allah protect us from Nifaq, I mean. Because Nifaq can come. Nifaq can come to any one of us. It's a disease, it can spread, it can come, we can catch it. If we start to dis disobey Allah. If we start to disobey Allah and we start to become lazy, especially when we become lazy. See, when you see the, these uh, Ghazawat and Tabuk especially, it was the laziness yeah, that parted or that separated, that distinguished the true believers from the hypocrites. They went to Tabuk, the believers. It was really difficult, wasn't it? Tabuk. What was the difficulty there? Who can tell us? One was the heat. What else? 
Hunger, what else? Time for harvest. Your whole year, you're waiting for this one harvest. Allah Ta'ala tested at that time. Hmm? Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Baqarah already that we will definitely test you with الخوف والجوء ونقص من الأموال والأنفذ والثمرات وبشر الصابرين We'll mention that later inshallah So the people were distinguished and we should think about this really honestly to be very frank and honest When we are doing da'wah am I trying to be at the front of it or am I being pestered to do it If you have to be reminded about an event and you have to be constantly reminded there's an issue there to be frank with you because Allah will ask me eh, as a team leader, did you tell them or not? If you have other priorities, then there's a problem. Allah Ta'ala says very clearly, Shagalatna amwaluna wa ahalina. Is it, Asim? <coughs> yeah, kept us busy. Our wealth and our families. You know, the first thing that you ask people, can you come to this? No, a family commitment. Fine, family has a right, yes. but there's no balance. All your life you spent with family commitment. You committed nothing to Allah and His deen. How will we answer for that? Allah Ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran to wake us up. That you don't spend every weekend picnicking with your family. Hmm? Because that's the life. No, this is not the life. If you want to have picnic, do a family open day, alhamdulillah. You'll have picnic and open day. <laughs> Eh? There's a solution there, alhamdulillah. No, serious, we have to really work hard. We have to be at the forefront. We in this room, if after this course we are not forefront, then there's an issue. That doesn't mean you don't come to the last session, yeah? That, oh my God, now I have responsibility. Alhamdulillah, Allah is giving us an honor, inshallah, to be at the forefront of conveying the message. Not to just be backbenchers, when Brother Masood calls, we'll go. If he doesn't open day, we'll go. If he doesn't do open day for one month to one year, I don't worry, he didn't call me. No, you should be pushing. Masood, do an open day, man. What are you doing? Wake up. You should be telling me. Isn't it? Sorry, getting a bit personal here. Hmm? But we love each other. That's why we have to be personal. Tawasabil haq, tawasabil sabr. We have to push each other to remain on this. You should be complaining to me. Now, Ahmad is good at this, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. You should say, Masood, why didn't you do open day this, this, this? Why didn't you do training now? How many have you done? That's all, you should do more. That's your role now, inshallah. Yeah? Jazakallah khair. Allah Okay. Okay. <coughs> Let's take the ayah next one. وَلَا يَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Allah, He will make it very clearly known who are the believers and very clearly he will make it known who are the munafiqeen. Especially on the Day of Judgment. <coughs> Allah will make it known. In Surah Hajj, this is Surah 22, Ayah 11. So make a note so you can inshallah look back at, look back at it and please do look back at these things inshallah. You know the way I look at this is that you have once in a lifetime opportunity to learn Quran. This is the honest truth. So, Surah 22, Ayah 11. We have once in a lifetime opportunity to learn Quran. Yeah? If we don't do it, it won't happen. It's as simple as that. If we don't commit time, mashallah, all of us, alhamdulillah, gave us tawfiq Allah did, to commit time, to be here consistently. Alhamdulillah. But if we don't do it, it won't happen. Life will just pass us by. Surah Hajj, Ayah 11. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ There are from amongst the people who worship Allah on the fringe. You know, on the fence. People on the fence. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرًا يَدْمَعَ النَّبِهِ When there's good, they're happy, yeah? Easy, easy life. وَإِنَّ صَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ But when there's hardship, they turn away. Allah Ta'ala is saying about these people, خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ They destroyed their life and the hereafter. 
they didn't do the work in this life and in the hereafter they are also going to be facing destruction. Because real peace, real itminan comes in this life bi dhikrillah, by remembering Allah. Remembering Allah is not you sitting down all your life just reciting subhanallah alhamdulillah akbar. This is part of it. But then you go and act upon it as the Prophet sallallahu he did all his life because he wanted you to see the life of the Prophet sallallahu What did he do for those 23 years? What did he do? Da'wah. Conveying the message, yes? Easy or difficult? Easy or difficult for him? Difficult. Anybody was deserving of more ease than him? Anybody more strategic than him? Any more kind person than him who can speak nicely, politely? Anybody? Then who are we? We have one obstacle and then we say, that's enough, khalas. This is too much for me. <coughs> May Allah protect us from being like that. Amen. Because we can change any minute, you know that. Any second, we can flip. I mentioned it on Friday in our dars about some people who have some strange belief about Allah. But they, because they don't know any different, they were taught that from childhood. So they believe in Allah to be like that. We could flip. Tomorrow morning you could wake up and you'd say, what is this? Shave this, what is this? It can happen, wallahi, it can happen, it's here. Isn't it? It's here. Don't ever think that oh, I'm on the deen, I'm going to... No, we don't know. Nobody, none of us knows. Just like when we were not, we, Allah changed our heart, Allah can change it from being to not. Yeah? That's why we should ask Allah Ta'ala always for guidance. I mean, Nahid, I think it's time to switch this. Yeah? Khair, let's move on. The last section now, inshallah. Sorry, you'll have to uh, look at your uh, um, booklet. I will try to bring this up again. Then we will go for break, inshallah. Okay, ayah 12 and 13. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا So, the people, the disbelievers, they say, لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا To the believers. Sorry, just one minute. Is it? No, okay. You carry on with that. So, the disbelievers say to the believers, اِتَّبِعُوا سَبِيلَنَا Follow our way. وَلْنَحْمِلْ خَطَايَاكُمْ And they say, we will carry the burden of your sins. So these are the people saying to the believers that look, you just stick to our way. Don't follow this man Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't follow this new way. Follow our way and if you feel guilty of that now, that this is wrong, don't worry. We are giving you guarantee that we will, f we will carry the burdens of your sins for you. So don't worry. وَمَا هُمْ بِحَامِلِينَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah Ta'ala is saying they will not be able to carry even one of them for them out of the sins that they commit. Now khata can mean a few things. One of them can be to... No, I don't know that. Sorry. One of them is that you try to aim for something and you miss it. This is... Yeah? You miss... So for example, you aim... For bullseye, you miss it. This is khata. But here, khata means a sin. It doesn't mean that. Because that's a mistake. And the Prophet told us that if you do that as a believer, you aim for something honestly, but you miss it, you still get reward for it. Yeah, You're not punishable for that. But these are sins. So they're saying we will carry your sins for you. Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ They are definitely lying to you. They are not going to carry your sins. However, وَلْيَحْمِلُنَّ أَثْقَالَهُمْ وَأَثْقَالَ مَا أَثْقَالِهِمْ However, they are definitely going to carry the burdens of those people with their own burdens. Now, what does that mean? That means 
¿Quieres saber qué? ¿Mm? Oh, this is working, eh? MashaAllah. Technology, eh? JazakAllah khair, Nahid. But they will surely carry their own burdens and other burdens along with their burdens and they will surely be questioned on the day of resurrection about what they used to invent. So this is telling us that people who are saying to you, the disbelievers, that follow our way, we will take your sins, they are lying in that regard. However, with the burden of their own sins, they will be carrying also other people's burdens because they initiated them. They initiated those sins or they influenced a person to do those sins without, however, taking away the burden from the sin from the person, him or herself. So let's explain that. So Abu Jahal, let's say, as an example, Abu Jahal is saying to Bilal, yeah, that leave this Muhammad come back to our way, yeah, and we will take care of you. Allah Ta'ala is saying, no, if you disobey Allah now, to the believer, Allah Ta'ala is saying, that not only will the person who is influencing you, let's say Abu Jahal, will he carry his own burden of sins, he will also carry the burden of the sins that you will now commit because of his influence. But at the same time, you, O Bilal, you will also carry your own burdens, but he has a share in it. You know the famous uh, uh, story of Qabil and Qabil, yeah? the sons of Adam alayhi salam. Yeah? So Qabil, he killed Habil. Qabil killed Habil. He was the initiator of murder. Anybody who murders now, Qabil has a share in it. He will carry the burden. That doesn't exempt the murderer from it, does it? No, the murderer has that burden. But that person who initiated it has a burden which is collection of all those people who are influenced. Flip that and the Prophet ﷺ said Man sanna fil islami sunna sayyi'a fa alayhi waziraha wa wazira man amila biha ba'dahu This is actually saying the same thing I said, this is not the flip here. Allah Ta'ala is saying, the Prophet ﷺ is saying that whoever in, in starts in Islam a practice which is not from Islam, essentially. Yeah? So a new innovation. Then the person who initiated it would carry the burden of those people who now act upon it. So if there's a bid'ah invented, yeah? Invention. That's why it's dangerous. Bid'ah is very dangerous. Yeah? Invention in Islam which is not from Islam. So let's say for example, as an example, I have to be careful what example I give now. Because yeah? I don't want fatwa against me. Yeah. Let's say if we were to say that it is good practice for us to all get together on Thursday evening and it has to be Thursday evening and we all have to recite a certain surah this many times in congregation as an example. If I were to say that or someone was to say that then this and we make it a practice that it has to happen every week and specifically that surah and that many times. If we do it once more or once less, it's not the same, yeah? We make it very specific. Then this becomes something that we are attributing to Islam. Because this is now beneficial because, yeah? We are attrib attributing it. But we have to be very careful with that. It is something that we do very precisely, consistently. It's not one-off thing, yeah? So the person would get the burden of that, who now follows. But at the same time, if you teach somebody something beneficial, you teach them Al-Qur'an. Yeah? You teach them even Al-Fatiha. In fact, if you want to teach somebody something, teach them Al-Fatiha. Because Al-Fatiha, the person will recite in every Salah. Hmm? Every Salah. And if the person knows it, just say, let me teach it to you again. Hmm? So let's teach each other Al-Fatiha now. Yeah? So we do that. Huh? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين we all taught each other in a revised al-fatiha alhamdulillah 
Yeah. So Allah Taala is saying these people who are telling you we will take guarantee for you, don't be uh, duped by them. Yeah? Don't be. What's the other word I'm looking for here? Yani, do not come under their um, influence. You could say, yeah. Another ayah I want to mention here. This is a very dangerous ayah, subhanallah. Two ayat. One I will refer to, one I will then give you the uh, full ayah. Surah Nahal, Nahal, N A H L. And this is ayah 25, yeah? Nahal 25. But the ayah I want to mention is Hud, Surah Hud, ayah 97 to 98. This is regarding Fir'aun. Yeah, this is regarding Fir'aun. إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَائِهِ فَاتَّبَعُوا أَمْرَ فِرْعَوْنَ And O Fir'aun and his elite, but they followed Fir'aun's dictates. وَمَا أَمْرُ فِرْعَوْنَ بِرَشِيدٍ And Fir'aun's dictates were not rightly minded. Meaning, Fir'aun, you see, because Fir'aun as a king, he cannot function without people following him, yeah? His ministers, his cabinet. Musa is calling to something, Fir'aun is calling to the opposite. The cabinet ministers, they are following Fir'aun. Clear so far? يَقْدُمُ قَوْمَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَأَوْرَدَهُمُ النَّارِ This is dangerous. On the day of judgment, resurrection, he, Fir'aun, will lead his people and bring them to and into the fire. Just as he led them in this dunya, and they followed, he will lead them and bring them. You know, fa'awrada means when you take a horse to water, you drive it to the water, yeah? Bring them to the destination. They will be brought to the fire. وَبِئْسَ الْوِرْدُ الْمَوْرُودِ An evil goal for these people, an evil place for them to end up in. And many times in the Qur'an it has been mentioned that the people who were followers, just blind followers, and we're about to end this session inshallah soon, who were blind followers of the people who are misguided, on the day of judgment, what will they do? What will they say? Yes, sister? They will bl blame the leaders, saying you led us to the hellfire? We were just following you. Yes? What else? Give them double, double. Yes, they will say, give them double the punishment. What will Allah Ta'ala say? What does the Quran say? Yes. Allah? Did you put your hand up? You put your hand up, yeah? I can't hear you. <laughs> Akhi, take some points off these teams messing about. <laughs> Mashallah, this lawyer here, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> They're all going to do it now. We're going to have a Mexican wave here. <laughs> Allah Allah. Allah Ta'ala, it will be said to them, Quran says that these people who will say, give these people who misled us twice the punishment, Allah Ta'ala will say in Quran, it says, Allah says, both of you have double the punishment. So the foolish person is the person who says, oh, my boss says so. My work says, my company says, my leader says, I have to follow it. You don't have to follow it. Because if you follow the person at that, that point, then you have to follow the consequence. So Allah Ta'ala, he is telling us, in this last ayah that we mentioned here, that although these, although these people the Quraysh, the leadership, Abu Jahal, at that time, Abu Sufyan also, he did not become Muslim yet. Abu Lahab, yeah, etc. They are all trying to pull you back, to follow their way. Don't go, go to them. Don't follow their way. And throughout history, throughout history, and this is part of history where we are living now, yeah. always the believers will always be invited to that. In some form or the other. 
We just need to be very careful. Is this an invitation which is like that? To do something like that? I have to be careful. I don't want to end up following these people who would then lead me astray. Yeah? Clear? Very dangerous, very, yani very pertinent. In all historical, I said, and today as well, and it will remain. We have to be very, we have to have our wits about things. Our perspective here, you can't see it. Uh, what does it say on your booklet? Because I might have something different. Ikram? Yeah, so do not be fooled by the enemies of Allah. Yeah? They might want to show that they are well wishes. Follow our ways, easy way. It's the best way, it's the good way. Don't be fooled by that. Also, this is Allah Ta'ala Sunnah. Yeah, Allah Ta'ala Sunnah is that He will لِيَمِيدِ الْخَبِيثِ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ Allah Ta'ala, He sifts the khabith, impure, from tayyib, the pure. This is like fitna, isn't it? Yeah, this is Allah Ta'ala's uh, Sunnah. So throughout history, throughout our lives, we always will come across situations where there is a choice to make. <coughs> We have to, inshallah, make the right choices for this dunya and especially for our akhirah. We have come to the end of this, uh, alhamdulillah, session now.